In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. God is good, all and all the time, all the word of God today in the gospel reminds us of who Christ is to us to us, that he is the bread of life. In order to sustain this physical body, we need the bread. That means we need food. Without food, this physical body will not survive. The same way that this physical body needs food, our soul requires the bread of life and that is Christ. Without Christ, our soul is dead. We come together this evening as a family of God to receive that bread of life which nourishes our soul, and that is Christ himself. Not because we are worthy, but because God loves us and he has given us that bread of life to sustain that which is so dear to him and that is our soul. In humility, therefore, we receive Christ in our heart, in our lives through the word of God. We receive that Christ through the bread of the Eucharist, the body of Christ, the body and blood of Christ, so that this soul, which is so, which is so important, that God may always keep it in communion with Himself. We pray that God may continue to make us as His instruments, especially in this work of Christ, which He has given us in the mission of evangelization that we make use of our schools to mold these people, especially in this 21st century. May God therefore give us the wisdom we need. May God therefore give us uh, the graces we need that we may be able to deliver and to do the will of God. We have many needs we like to present during this Mass. Let us place our needs or what we want to ask God at this altar as we celebrate this Eucharist. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and my words, in what I have done and what I failed to do, through my fault, through my through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask blessed Mary and Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me, the Lord our God. May your mighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
O God, who open wide the gates of the heavenly kingdom to those reborn of water and the Holy Spirit, pour out on your servants and an increase of the grace you have bestowed, that having been purged of all sins, they may lack nothing that in your kindness you have promised. We make our prayer. The Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. of the apostles. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In those days, Stephen said to the people and the elders and the scribes, you stiff-necked people, uncircumcised in heart and ears, you always resist the Holy Spirit. As your fathers did, so do you. Which of the prophets did not your fathers persecute? And they killed those who announced beforehand the coming of the righteous one, whom you have now betrayed and murdered. You who received the law as delivered by angels and did not keep it. Now, when they heard these things, they were enraged, and they ground their teeth against him. But he, full of the Holy Spirit, gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God. And Jesus standing at the right hand of God. And he said, Behold, I see the heavens opened, and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they cried out with a loud voice, and stopped their ears, and rushed together upon him. Then they cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their garments at the feet of a young man named Saul. And as they were stoning Stephen, he prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And when he had said this, he fell asleep, and Saul was consenting to his death. The word of the Lord. Responsorial Psalm. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Into your hands, O Lord. My spirit into your hands, O Lord, I command my spirit. 
be a rock of refuge for me, a might stronghold to save me. For you are my rock, my stronghold. Lead me, guide me, for the sake of your The bread of life, says the Lord. He who comes to me shall not hunger. According to John, Glory to you, Lord. at that time, the people say to Jesus, Then what sign do you do that we may see and believe you? What work do you perform? Our fathers ate the manna in the wilderness, as it is written, He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven. My Father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They say to him, Lord, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall not anchor, and he who believes in me shall never thirst. The gospel of the Lord.
God is good and all the time. In the first reading today from the act of the apostles, we have heard very strong ones of Stephen directed to the people and especially to the elders and the, and the scribes. You stiff naked people and circumcised in heart and ears, you always resist the Holy Spirit. As your fathers did, so do you. Which of the prophets did, did not your fathers persecute? Stephen, young man, was not afraid to tell these elders, these scribes, that the path they are following is the wrong path. They do not want to listen to the word of God. Their ancestors also did the same. They never listened to the prophets. God sent messages. They added their hearts. The psalmist tells us if all that today you listen to his voice, harden not your hearts. They never softened their hearts. On contrary, we have heard what they did, drew out this young man out of the town, out of the city, and stored him and killed him. But Stephen did not see their action as something to worry him. He prayed to God, into your hands, Lord, I commend my spirit. And from then on, Stephen started a new life in the hands of God. But before that, he also prayed for them. So Stephen was generous. He did not only commit his life to God, but also he committed even the life of those who are killing him, who are destroying his life, and he asked for the forgiveness for them. Christ, the gospel today, is challenged. What sign are you going to give us? What sign? What work do you perform? Our fathers ate manna in the wilderness, as it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. So who are you? They know Jesus as the son of Joseph. They know Jesus as son of Mary from very insignificant town, Nazareth. There is no great prophet, no king or anybody known, you know, to have any title from Nazareth. So who are you claiming to be a son of a carpenter, a son of a poor woman? Which sign are you going to give us? And Jesus said, I am the bread of life. You comes to me shall not hunger, and you believes in me shall not thirst. These are very strong ones of Jesus Christ. I am the bread of life. At the beginning of the Mass, I've said, bread represents food. This physical body needs food to be nourished from morning to the end of the day, starting maybe with breakfast and so forth. Because this physical body must be sustained by the physical food. Christ says, I am the bread of life. Our soul requires Christ. In this 21st century, we have contrary voice telling us the soul does not require Christ. We are burdened with the worldly things, things which are taking us away from God, from the path of God, the worldly way. My dear brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ has shared that bread of life through the missionaries who came, who left everything 
and came to our lands. They became Eucharist to us. They received Christ and they came to share with us that Christ. We are the fruit of the missionaries because we are not selfish. It is now our turn to be missionaries to our own people and especially in the 21st century. That without fear, without contradiction, we must share that Christ with others. We must break that bread of life. We must communicate that body of Christ without fear. Christ told his disciples, do not be afraid. Why? Because he is with them till the end of time. Remember the words of St. Paul. It is no longer I who lives. He says, no, no, no. It is Christ who lives in me. And Paul is not afraid to say, imitate me as I imitate Christ. Because Paul knew what he was sharing with the people. It was not himself, but Christ. My dear brothers and sisters, we are also invited to share that Christ. By our way of life, by what God has given us, our provision. In various ways, the responsibilities have been given by the church. We continue to break Christ, the Eucharist, to others without fear. And following the example of St. Stephen, we should even be ready, even if it means to die, to be martyrs. Christ has given us what we need to share with others. We are not going to ask, where do we get that Christ? Christ is with us. Let us break Christ to others. Let us be Eucharist to the others. Maybe I give a short story of an old man who had three sons. And when he realized his time was coming to depart from this world, he called his sons and said, I have my word to share with you. He had 17 camels. And he said to the first one, I give you half of this. To the second one, one third. And to the last one who was a teacher, he said, I give you one ninth. When their dad passed on and uh, they did the final right, they came together as three sons to divide the wealth. And the elder one, who was the one who was normally taking care of those camels, he said, my dad gave me half. Now, half of 17 is what? Eight and? Eight and a half. Now, how do you get half of a camel? It was very difficult. The young one said, well, you don't need to kill a camel to get half. Why don't you get eight? It's enough. He said, but what was the intention of my father? My father said very clearly, half. He knew what he was saying. And half of 17 is not eight. It's eight and a half. The second born, who was a driver, he said, me, I was given one third. One third of 17 is 6.5 or 6.6 .6 there. So how do you get uh, 0.6? And one ninth was coming to 1.8 there. So they could not agree how to divide. The elder son said, well, since we have a great friend of our dad, of our late dad, who is also an elderly man, he was 95, why don't we go and consult him? And the teacher said, now, this is issue of mathematics. An, elder, an elderly man of 95, with even imbecile, we cannot even think of him even helping us to divide these camels. Why waste time? And the elder son said, why don't we try? Every time we had any difficult you know, challenges in our family, our dad would call this man. Why don't we go to him and uh, you may help us? So he was persuaded, the young son, and they went. And the, young, the man said, well, Follow what your dad has said. If you want the blessings, follow what your dad said. So how do we do it? 
How do we divide these camels? There are 17. And the, 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 the man told them, you go back home. Tomorrow morning, I will come to tell you how you are going to share the 17 camels as per the intention of your father, as per the will of your father. So the young man went lamenting and said, I told you that man has nothing to offer. If he had wisdom, he should have given us. Why wait until tomorrow morning? And the other son told him, now that he has said tomorrow, not after one year or two years. Why don't you wait tomorrow? Then uh, if there is no solution, we'll go back again to the drawing boat. The next morning, this elderly man went, took one of his camel, and he went to this family, he told this young man, you know, your father was like my brother. I give you this camel. So he asked the elder son, your father said, how much should you get? He said, half. So 17 plus 1 is what? 18. It's get your half. What is half of 18? Nine. So the man took nine. He asked the other one, the second born. What did your father say? One third. 18 divided by three? Six. He went and took six. And the last born, what did your father say? One ninth. 18 divided by nine? Eh? Two. So nine plus six? Nine plus six? 15. 15 plus two? So the man took the other one, which remained, and he went to home. So the one who was a teacher said, but how, how have you resolved this? He said, all of you, you have received what your dad wanted. You, you are to receive 8.5, you have received 9. You, you are to receive 1.8, you know? The other one was to receive 5.6, you have got 6. You have to receive 1.8, you have got 2. Kila mutu wamepata haki yake, you know? What am I saying? When you give, when you give, do not think that you have lost. If anything, you have gained. This man gave one camel. Did he lose anything? He went back with his camel at home. My dear brothers and sisters, when Christ asks us to give, it's because he knows by giving, we receive. By giving, we do not lose anything. Yes, at Sometimes you may be very stressed by thinking how will this school work, how will things be managing this school and so forth. Remember, we are breaking Christ to others. Yes, moments of difficulties and challenges will be there, but we are not alone, we are with Christ. Let us break that Christ that has become Eucharist to others. Let us follow the examples of our missionaries who left everything and they came, and even some are buried here because they did not foresee even going back because they wanted to share with us Christ. We are here because they became Eucharist to us. Let us also become Eucharist to others. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. We are now arise for the prayers. <laughs> Dear brothers and sisters, filled with the Paschal joy, let us pray more earnestly to God that he who graciously listened to the prayers and supplications of his beloved son may now be pleased to look upon us in our holiness. Our prayer is, Lord, graciously hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For the shepherds of souls, 
that they may have the strength to govern wisely the flock and trust into them by the good shepherd. Let us pray to the Lord. For the whole world, that it may truly know the peace given by Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, graciously hear us. For our brothers and sisters who suffer, that their sorrow may be turned to gladness, which no one can take from them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, graciously hear us. For our own, com our own community, that it may bear witness with great confidence to the resurrection of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, graciously hear us. Let us have more intentions, two or three. We pray for the church that the good Lord may guide the leaders of the church and all the Christians to continue serving him faithfully. We pray to the Lord. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for all the teachers and our institutions. We ask God to continue helping us and supporting us in all that we do and instilling in us wisdom and knowledge as we lead and serve his people. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for the souls of the faithful departed, especially the souls of the teachers, that the good Lord may receive their souls and grant them eternal happiness in his kingdom. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. O oh God, who oh know that our life in this present age is subject to suffering and need, hear the desires of those who cry to you and receive the prayers of those who believe in you. As is Christ our Lord.
My sacrifice to yours may be pleasing and acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of His church. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your existent church, and as you have given all cause for such great gladness, Grant also that the gift we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them unto the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is true, right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all, Lord, you yet more gloriously. When Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed, he never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is a sacrificial victim who dies no more. The Lamb, once slain, who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with the Paschal joy, every land, every people exult in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the Jeric hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim.
are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy therefore this gift, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered wearing ring to his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when Saba was ended, he took the charis, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the near and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Irene fumbora imani, ale kova, Kristo ale vuvuka, Kristo ataku jeteno. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. And we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember your church. Lord, spread it throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with the Francis our Pope, Philip our Bishop, David his auxiliaries, together with the Simon and Wallace, our Bishop here present with us, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. And all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all we pray, that is the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her most chaste spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. You may merit to be co heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, the him and in him. O God Almighty, Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory adonai is you us forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, there a kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you sent the apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. 
The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Christ. Peace of Christ. away the sins of the world. <coughs> Blessed are those gone to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Those up there, please come down, come down.
sala baada ya kumnyo roho ya Kristo initakaze mwili wa Kristo niokoe damu ya Kristo nitarishe mwanzo wa kwa Kristo niosha na mwanzo ya Kristo nguvu ya nisikishie yeye Yesu wema usikize katika madunda yako nipite usikubali nitengane nao na roho wako mikinge sasa ya kupa kwangu niite niamuru kwa konje na watakatifu wako nikutukuze milele na milele If we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with Christ. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those who are pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Oh, a few announcements. Number one, we thank uh, our Lord Bishop for being with us today from morning up to this hour and in particular for leading us in the celebration of the Holy Eucharist. We thank you, our Lord Bishop. We thank Professor Steve Bogwa, uh, the Chancellor of the University, the Vice Chancellor of the University, for being with us again and uh, for offering this facility for free. You are yet to tell us at what uh, cost. But we thank you. <laughs> we thank you very much. We thank you. Number three, the, uh, the chaplain for choir, Reverend Father William Kosigay, is the new uh, chaplain for choir. We have been with him, and we thank you, Father, through the university for being with us and for organizing that uh, our spiritual exercises will go uh, smoothly. We thank you, Father. Can you stand, Father, with you? That is him. That is the Chancellor from the Diocese of Eldoret. And then with... Sorry, sorry, Chaplain. <laughs> Neither is it bad. <laughs> Then we thank all of you for being here the whole day, the organizers, and all the participants. We thank you for your patience, for your active participation. We'll not forget our caption friends. They're always doing us good because they are helping us in evangelization. We thank you, caption the television. And then announcement number one, that all the education secretaries will be having a meeting after this month together with the National Executive Council with the NEC officials in room LRC6, that is the basement up there, they'll be meeting together Announcement number two, delegates to carry their, you are reminded to come with your tags tomorrow. Don't forget them because they'll be required, you'll be required to identify yourself by using those uh, tags. And then the program for tomorrow will start at 7.45. We thank again our choir, before I forget. Tomorrow will be Mombasa and Nyeri combined. We shall be expecting a Bishop John Obala Owa if there is no change to be with us tomorrow for the Mass. Thank you very much. May God bless you. Bishop can bless us.
Bow your hands and receive God's blessings. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May God, who by the resurrection of his only begotten Son was pleased to confer on you the gift of redemption and of adoption, give you gladness by his blessing. Amen. May by whose redeeming work you have received the gift the gift of everlasting freedom make you heirs to our eternal inheritance. Amen. And may you who have already risen with Christ in baptism through faith by living a right manner, by living in a right manner on this earth, be united with him in the homeland of heaven. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you now and forever. Amen. 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 Amen.
En muchas partes del mundo, la mujer es tratada como primer material de descarte. Hay países donde las mujeres tienen prohibido acceder a ayudas para armar un negocio o ir a la escuela. Incluso en esos lugares soportan leyes que las obligan a vestir de una determinada manera y todavía están en uso en muchos países las mutilaciones genitales. No les neguemos a las mujeres la voz. No les neguemos a todas estas mujeres víctimas de abuso la voz. Son explotadas, son marginadas. De palabra todos estamos de acuerdo que en el hombre y la mujer tienen la misma dignidad como personas, pero en la práctica eso no ocurre. Es necesario que los gobiernos se comprometan a eliminar leyes discriminatorias en todas partes y a trabajar para que los derechos humanos de las mujeres estén garantizados. Respetemos a las mujeres. Respetémosla en su dignidad, en sus derechos fundamentales. Y si no lo hacemos, nuestra sociedad no avanzará. Oremos para que la dignidad y la riqueza de las mujeres sean reconocidas en todas las culturas y para que cese la discriminación que sufren en diversas partes del mundo. Capchin actually is contributing so effectively to the evangelization in the, in, the, in the Kenyan church. Remember, on Good Friday, we were together the whole journey. Remember, the whole journey of the way of the cross, they were together, they were covering, and even on, uh, on Holy Thursday, they were still with us. Let us support it because we need it. The media people, other media people, are so secular. They cover mostly the secular information. But the Caption TV will cover the religious, you know, messages, the gospel, the teachings of the church. So for me, I, I would encourage each one of you, let us give the moral support, material support, and encouragement so that they will continue to contribute uh, in the evangelization in the church, in the Kenyan church, not even the Kenyan church. Many people who are uh, outside the country, even in America and Europe, They watch Caption TV, even through the YouTube and the Facebook, they watch, and so they are doing a wonderful job. Caption TV, Hongera Sana. Tumetoka Bali, Bali, Tuko Bali, Natunayanda Wapi, Bali. Endelea Kutazama, Caption TV, Huduma Kat. Are you searching for a profound spiritual journey, a time of reflection and a transformative experience? Look no further. Welcome to Beatitude Christian Formation Center where spirituality meets education. 
We are thrilled to introduce to you our St. John Paul II sabbatical program in Maragua, a unique opportunity for personal and spiritual growth. It was started on uh, 10th of August 2013 by our bishop, uh, James Maria Wainaina. So it is his brain uh, child. It's a place which is situated in Maragua, uh, Beatitudes uh, Christian Formation uh, Center, and we admit priests, sisters, brothers uh, who have worked in the ministry for about seven years, and they are tired, and they would like to come and have uh, what we call quality rest. At Beatitude Christian Formation Center, we believe in nurturing the soul and deepening the connection with the divine. And uh, these priests, sisters and brothers can come from anywhere, Africa, even abroad, as so long as they are Catholic priests, sisters and uh, brothers. And uh, uh, they need also to be willing also to come. Uh, so that they rest and when they come here uh, we make sure that they rest well. We offer different uh, topics which will invite someone to reflect. Our experienced and compassionate instructors are committed to guiding you through a transformative journey. Drawing inspiration from the teachings of St. John Paul II, we aim to foster a deep sense of faith, self-discovery and community. It takes four months. So per year, uh, we have two intakes. One, January to May, sometime May, and the other one is August to sometime December. So I would want to invite priests and sisters and brothers who feel tired to know that taking a break and coming like to this sabbatical center here in Muranga, a very serene uh, environment, uh, sharing with others, one discovers the depth and the treasures within them. But don't just take our word for it. Listen to the stories of those who have embarked on this incredible journey with us. For the length of time that I've been here for four months, I've enjoyed the place, even the, the teachings, the lessons that we have had here, the enough time for resting, the time for exercises, and I'm going back now very energized to begin the work anew. The center has given us the opportunity to rest, dig deep and purpose our passions to re-energize ourselves away from the workplace while minimizing confusion about our former preferred procedures. So I have really uh, benefited from this program. The holistic sabbatical program has renewed my priestly life. I am no longer the same. The courses we covered in class, presented by highly qualified lecturers, transformed my mindset. The spiritual program of the diocese of Murang encouraged me to restore my priestly image. I saw people engaging in various spiritual exercises and they know how to positively use a priest. The program also exposed me to Eucharistic adoration and deeper personal reflection and prayer. St. John Paul II Sabbatical Center is truly a place of, a place of rest, prayer, reflection and renewal. We are now coming out of this place refilled, renewed, revitalized for another opportunity, another beginning. Some of the participants had been working for 20 plus years without such kind of a break. So this, this has been a good opportunity for rest. Spiritual rest, spiritual renewal, even even physical physical rest and physical physical renewal. You know, when you're out at work, sometimes you even miss time for physical uh, uh, renewal, physical rejuvenation. But these uh, four months have been a good opportunity for us to get back into into those uh, deeper, intimate moments of oneself. Join us at Beatitude Christian Formation Center for the Saint John Paul II Sabbatical Program. A journey of faith, 
renew and self discovery when you come here and you are going back you go back refreshed then you run to the mission impress the mission and then you kiss the mission means that you, you take the mission as your own now as the work of Jesus and you continue to to forge ahead with it for more information contact us at 0713 Four five seven five two two. Beatitude Christian Formation Center, where spiritual journey begins. At the invitation of Father in charge for the Richard Iro in the parish pastoral council, Capuchin TV will join the parishioners of St Joseph Catholic Church Tudor in the Catholic Archdiocese of Mombasa as they celebrate Golden Jubilee on Sunday, May 5th this year. This auspicious event will take place at the pastoral center in Tudor, Mombasa, starting at 10 a.m. The Holy Mass will be presided over by His Grace Archbishop Martin Kivuva of the Archdiocese of Mombasa as they commemorate the Golden Jubilee for the Richard Iro expresses gratitude saying My special message in this 50 years of faith in St Joseph Tudor Parish is that we thank God for this far we have gone as a parish we all know the challenges which are now affecting us globally the secularization modernization is taking roots in the world and it is a very vital opportunity as a parish that we are celebrating 50 years of faith so i want to urge the parishioners of st joseph chuda let's remain united in faith let's propagate the unity of faith in all that we do in all that we touch and in anything that we speak and to all those we meet let us instigate this faith that we have received as we celebrate this 50 years in our parish we believe and hope this faith that we have created this faith that we have cultivated will bear fruits and will always be there to show the humanity that we have come from far we are far and we are going very far and our lord jesus christ reminds us always that let's always work together for the purpose of love because he said in the book of john that all may be one thank you very much This momentous occasion will be broadcasted live on Capuchin TV and across its various social media platforms. As you commemorate your golden jubilee, Capuchin TV extends its warmest congratulations to all the parishioners of St Joseph Catholic Church Tudor Mombasa for this remarkable milestone. Keep watching Capuchin TV, your Catholic identity channel.
Basilica, Parochial School. Our vision and the mission for holistic growth. A great future belongs to the creative learners. Unlock a boundless future for your child with the Catholic Parochial School. We are an institution that offers holistic education to the learners to ensure that they are fully formed to fit in the society. And our vision is to be a model school that cultivates love for lifelong learning, spiritual growth, and exemplary moral values. This school was started with the intention of offering holistic education and the formation of the young one. And I am happy that over the years, the school has been able to achieve that our institution blends academic rigor with enriching co-curricular activities, empowering learners to realize their aspirations and emerge as exemplary members of society. We also offer co-curricular activities that in CBC are very much encouraged to participate. We offer taekwondo, we offer chess, we have the school band, we offer swimming lessons, we offer table tennis and we also participate in music and drama. All these have excelled to the national levels and we, ha we are proud of, of the learners and the teachers and also the parents for encouraging their learners to participate in these activities. We are rooted in spiritual, intellectual and character development. Our holistic approach fosters moral values, integrity and respect, nurturing students to not only excel academically but also thrive in their future endeavors. Tumepata zawadi nyingi hapa nchini katika county ya Nairobi kwa sababu ya nidhamu yetu. Watoto wetu ni watoto ambao wamefunzwa. Kwa sababu tunaelewa kwamba nidhamu ni kitu muhimu maishani mwa kila mtu. Ukiwa na nidhamu unaweza kutangamana na mtu yeyote pale nchini pia duniani kote. As a church and as a parish, we are so much involved in the formation of these children. We offer spiritual nourishment which include catechism, uh, masses every week and even chanting with them counseling and confession as part of the catechism. In the school, we have a qualified team for counseling and guidance, and we come in to support them where we are needed as the clergy, not only just for spiritual matters. Being a church institution, we also offer help where need be. We have the association that gives help to the poor children who are the orphans and the needy in the society. Our dedicated team of skilled and passionate educators create a nurturing environment where children surpass their own expectations, guaranteeing a joyous journey of learning and growth. We have employed a qualified and a competent team of the staff, especially the teachers who journey with our young children. And this is in line with the CBC requirement and also the Ministry of Education. We begin with a step to convince then a thousand miles are complete and all the steps are made for all the journey to make. Katika mitiani tofauti tofauti ambayo tumekua tukifanya ili ya KCP pia kipsea wanafunzi wetu wamekua wakiito shule nzuri kabisa KCP wanafunzi wetu wameenda katika shule za kitaifa Tajika kama Mangu, wengine wameenda Alliance, wengine wameenda Kenya High na shule nyingine nzuri zaidi na wale wengine wameenda shule zote nzuri. Last year our best learner went to Alliance Girls and the two followed went to Kenya High School. So we are the best school in Nairobi. Hawa ni wanafunzi ambao wamepitia mikono ya walimu waliojaa tajriba vile vile wazazi ambao wanawatunza na kuwafunza nidhamu ndipo watoto wetu waweze kuwa watu wazuri zaidi enroll your child with us today and pave the way for a flourishing future give us your child and you will not regret having brought your child to holy family basilica we have a conducive environment a secure one 
Being the CBD of this town, we have adequate security and we are able to take care of your child. Reach out to us at 786 242-868 or send an email to catholicparochial at gmail.com I encourage parents especially those who are working around the town is so central you can drop your child in the morning even as you attend the morning mass is here or go to the place of work and then in the evening you can be able to pick the child The doors to the administration office remain open every working day within working hours. Visit us at the Holy Family Basilica in Nairobi capital. I'm grateful even for those who started and above all the, our archbishop who is the passe, the father in charge of this parish. We thank even the sisters who are running the school, the little sisters of St. Francis for their dedication to this mission. Mama, I'm the